Hey, what's up? This is Joe. I'm in uh, Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico, and uh, I wanted to make this video to show you the crazy ride that I took through the state of Chihuahua. Um, Chihuahua being one of the largest states of Mexico, it also contains some of the most beautiful scenery, uh, in my opinion. Got all the, the high desert, the Sierra Madres, some absolutely incredible, I mean, breathtaking uh, rock formations. If you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. As usual, there's a donate link in the drop box below if you'd like to support this project. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road. Picking up from where we left off in last week's video, we join our man in Yekora, right next to the Chihuahua Sonora border. Típica de Sonora, mi hotel está para allá. Sonora is famous, uh, worldwide famous for their beef. So this is carne asada, I got my tortillas, mi café. Been a largo viaje, long, long voyage, so uh, I'm ready to eat. Fantastic, uh, muy sabroso. Most of the quality of the food in, uh, in Mexico is, you know, for what you're paying is, you know, pretty impressive, so. All right, well, I'm in Yecora, um, in uh, the state of Sonora, not far from Chihuahua, heading basically in a uh, general direction towards, not really sure how you say it, it's either uh, Creel or, it looks like Creel, but it's Creel or Creel. Stayed here last night, got a cheap hotel in there, been working on the computer. Obviously got my uh, my bike covered. It looks like a dog has been jumping on this, son of a bitch. Almost never use this in the States, but uh, down here I like to cover it up just to kind of like, you know, people can't really see what's under there. So just a little extra step to kind of deter anybody that might be curious. After getting a much needed night's rest, I continued on further into the Sierra Madres Mountains towards Krill in the state of Chihuahua. Right at the uh, Sonora Chihuahua uh, border. Chihuahua is like right over there, uh, a couple of miles. I've been on the road almost two hours. I've done 
like 40 miles. So, you know, it's it's one of those kind of roads. Uh, pretty rough in spots, but you know, that's that's pretty normal. The scenery out here is absolutely beautiful. There's pine trees. We'll see you later. Although this abandoned cabin would work as a shelter in a pinch, it smelled heavily of mold and was thus avoided. Collectively known as the Big State, Chihuahua is the largest in the country by area and contains a number of breathtaking mountain roads along with some of the best beef cattle in the world. About halfway to Krill, I decided to stop for the day, search out a cheap room, and try some of the famous Chihuahua Inse beef. This is ranchera, which is an extremely tender cut of meat. I don't know where it comes from. Extremely tender, extremely soft, suave as they say, and uh, salsa verde, limon some sort of guacamole. This is kind of the lunch room of the hotel. There's my, uh, my rooms over that way. Nobody else here. I guess they have a buffet uh, at some point, but uh, I'm about to dig into this. Oh, it looks like I have a pet. What's up, dog? Pretty normal for Mexico. What's up, puppy? Habitacion. Okay. I think I got a little desk, do some work on the computer. Uh, let's see, this place is actually very, very nice. Nicer than I would like, honestly. But, uh, it is what it is. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go get some water. I'll see you later. Apparently there's a big ass waterfall about two miles away. So uh, I'm gonna check that and then head down to uh, Krell. See you later.
from the Cascada Basasiachi, the incredible scenery continued as I pressed on through the curvy mountain roads towards Krill. So I'm in uh, the town of San Vicente, Chihuahua. Just rode 60 miles down some crazy hairpin turns. Not that they were really such hairpin turns, it's just that the road was pretty rough. So the going was average 40 kilometers, 25 miles an hour, about uh, 19 miles away from Creel, or Krell, or Creel, or however you say it. So anyway, 20 more miles, let's go. Krell Chihuahua. So that's filet mignon covered with uh, uh, a mushroom cream sauce. And uh, the cost of that was uh, like six dollars US. This place has got some really fancy items on the menu and very, very affordable. The so-called six dollar filet mignon was actually a cheap cut of beef covered in condensed cream of mushroom soup. It was ironic that in a place renowned for the quality of the beef that they would serve this, but not uncommon in really touristy areas. Nevertheless, I'd already gotten to try some truly amazing Chihuahua Inse beef, and we'll get to try much more before I left the state.
only a, in Mexico type of a thing. This is obviously a drunk, and he's being attended to by a shrimp uh, doctor, nurse. It took me a second to get it. So basically, uh, you know, you tie one off the night before you get hung over, you come here the next day, they'll fix you up. They got all the food, you know, apparently that's gonna solve your hangover, so. The presence of the Raramuri indigenous population is immediately apparent in the style of dress you see in this part of Mexico, which has maintained its distinctive style throughout the centuries. The town is also famous as a stop along the Chepe Express, a railway running from Los Mochis to Chihuahua City and featuring breathtaking views of the mountains. There's a heavy indigenous influence here, a lot of interesting shops. Um, I ate tonight and it was okay. It wasn't, wasn't great by Mexico standards. There's a guy up there cutting a pastor, a trompo. That's uh, that trompo that he's cutting up there, if you can see it. Evidence of the uh, Arab influence from way back in the day. A lot of Arabs settled uh, here in Mexico and they brought that technique that he's cutting up there on that uh, trompo. Buenas noches. Disculpa, señora. Uh, ¿Se vende calcomanías? Eh, no. Okay, muchas gracias. After doing the routine inspection the next day, I prepared to hit the road. So getting ready to uh, to leave the town of Krell or Creel or Krill or however they say it, uh, I really need to ask somebody about that. Anyhow, uh, just getting packed up and uh, getting ready to leave the hotel. A couple of things about the hotels. First of all, it's customary in Mexico to uh, to leave a tip, pull out about 20 pesos, which is about a dollar, leave it on the table. They ain't getting paid uh, U.S. prices to uh, to clean these rooms, so it's the least you can do, really. Uh, the remote. So anytime you check into a hotel, they give you the remote with your key. To the TV, a lot of times it operates the mini split, which is the uh, the air and cooling system. And uh, I guess people walk off with these, so they they give you the uh, the remote, and you're supposed to return it in the morning, I guess. Uh, this has been an interesting town, so uh, I'm heading to Guacocochi. Uh, Guacochi walk into the store actually to get some more water I've got about a liter on me which is uh, you know about a quarter of a gallon I'm gonna be riding through the mountains for about a hundred miles which the map says is gonna take four hours which is you know 25 mile an hour speed limit 40 kilometers I guess so I'm gonna make sure I got water always carry a day's worth of food on me just in case sardines rice and stuff like that so if I do find somewhere if I'm broken down God forbid I've got supplies enough to last a day Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. Estoy haciendo el check-up, por favor. Ok, todo bien. Muchas gracias.
It's here at this lake outside of Krill where the indigenous women of the Raramori come each day selling hand-woven clothes. While the rest of the roads I'd been traveling up to this point had been amazing, it was this road going southward from Krill to Wachochi, running parallel to the infamous Copper Canyon that was truly a spellbinding experience. middle of nowhere right now in the state of Chihuahua riding through the mountains uh, on the way to uh, a town or a city I should say called uh, Huachochi. Indigenous population uh, have a strong presence out here so I've uh, been seeing a lot of their uh, traditional native dress. Some of them walking and on horseback or donkeys literally miles from anywhere. Uh, so these people must be in hella good shape to uh, to do the kind of walking that it would take to get anywhere. I've been riding for uh, two and a half hours and uh, I've done 60 miles. You can imagine how remote it is out here. So I haven't seen a store or a gas station the last 60 miles since I left Krell. Taking a break uh, after 60 miles, it was time to get some water or agua as they say and get down the road. I'm about 36 miles away from the next town, Huachochi. See you on the road.
So this uh, area of Mexico, uh, namely in Sonora, Chihuahua, are famous for a certain breed of cow that basically, since the time of Cortez, when Cortez uh, came to Mexico, brought a bunch of cattle. And uh, so this breed of cow is uh, are the descendants of the cows that uh, were brought over by Hernan Cortez. For the last 400 years, they've uh, existed with very little outside influence. Uh, so it's a very pure breed. The meat is just extremely tender, melts in your mouth. Famous the world over. <laughs> hey, this is cool. Rather than uh, simply hang a regular old picture on the wall, they drew a regular old picture coming out of the wall that is freaking cool. Somebody did a hell of a job. Just painted it right onto the concrete. Getting out of its bounds. But, uh, hold on. I already had this little place to myself last night. Cute little uh, casita, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, I got down to about 35 degrees last night. There's a propane heater in there that wasn't uh, wasn't really functional. The thing about those is, once they get too hot, they automatically shut off. It's never hot enough, um, especially when it's as cold as it is. Headed to uh, greener pastures. I need to find a place actually to uh, upload my video. Where I've been in the mountains uh, for the last few days, there's a really weak internet signal, so I haven't been able to upload anything. So I'm headed to uh, the city of Parral to uh, see if I can do something about it there. Yeah. last leg of my incredible Chihuahua Odyssey would take me to Hidalgo de Parral, a city near the Durango border which draws a considerable number of bikers due to the annual motorcycle rally there and its proximity to some awesome riding. It's here we see the interesting transition from mountains to high desert as we begin to enter the eastern half of the state.
So Parral is a really beautiful town. They've got a motorcycle rally here that happens a couple weeks before Sturgis. I didn't stay, obviously, I was on the way to Sturgis. I'm not really gonna ride around too much because this place is a nightmare to, uh, to get around. If you'd like to see more of the town of Parral, check out my video, The Ride to Sturgis Part One. It is a really cool town, built into the mountains, beautiful architecture. So I'm staying on the outskirts of town this time because I don't want to drive through that shit again. That being said, absolutely beautiful town, just logistically not really able to handle the traffic. But you see that a lot, particularly in really historical places where they want to sort of uh, keep the traditional historic vibe and not change it too much. One uh, side effect of that is you get terrible traffic, uh, a lot of congestion and stuff. 